Hi and welcome to this video, Waxing Your Bicycle Chain. It's certainly taken off now. There are more and more concoctions now available on the market for you to buy to wax your bicycle chain with. Now, as a consumer, you really have little choice but to trust the claims a lot of these sellers provide you. And if you pick up one of the lubricants, you read all sorts of claims and catch phrases such as, it's the fastest lubricant, or cleans as it lubricates. How about superior durability coating, or fights friction? Contains friction modifiers, and one of my favorites that I read lately was, contains turbostatic platelets. <laughs> well, the list can go on. And a lot of these sellers really are riding on the fact that you're putting faith in the more money you spend, well, it really must be so. And then there are various methods of application, from drip-on wax, to wipe-on wax, to a spray-on wax, or you can immerse your chain or soak it in the liquid wax as well. But one thing to be sure is, of the plant, animal, petroleum and polyethylene waxes available, it's petroleum or paraffin wax which is proved over time to be superior as a lubricant. Now this new territory, and that's combining an additive with the paraffin wax, which improves the wax as a lubricant even further. And that's what this new lubricant is all about. But more on the additives in a minute. First of all, let's take a look at why you should choose wax-based lubricant over any other lubricant. If you have a half-decent bike, why put up with a lube that makes your chain a dirt magnet, which wears out your chain and in turn will take down your whole drivetrain with it, costing you big dollars. Get a puncture in your rear wheel and you've got dirty hands. It gets on your clothes, in your car, and who's not familiar with the old leg tattoo? And even with the best of lubricants, it gets, well, just everywhere. And then there's trying to clean it all. It's dirty, fiddly, time-consuming, and uses lots of chemicals. And even then, is that chain really clean and lubed on the inside? A waxed chain attracts so little dirt, even after a 100km ride, there's hardly a speck of dirt to see on your chain. It's so clean, you could eat your dinner off it. It's done 102 k's. Just finished the ride. Beautiful. It's like pristine. Oh, I've got wet on it. Don't think it. Look at that, nothing on it. Ah, there you've got to get something off that. Hardly there. Nothing. Nothing. Recommended. The initial cleaning of a new chain takes a little more time to get all the factory lube out. But once done, the only cleaning required ever is at every re-wax to pour hot water over the chain and it's ready to pop straight into the wax. But more about that in just a moment. Your chain poses double the amount of friction than all the bearings combined on your bike. That's right, twice as much. But what makes it even worse is a dirty and contaminated lubricant that's on your chain. Now, as far as friction is concerned, lubricants present both stiction and viscous drag. Now, if you're not familiar with those terms, look them up. It's very interesting reading. The lubricant graphite, it's a dry lubricant and it has very low stiction and low viscous drag. So it's a fast lubricant for your chain. However, the downfall is it doesn't last very long. It's a short lifespan and you're forever reapplying it on your chain. Then there's grease. Grease is a slow lubricant, so it has high stiction and high viscous drag. However, it has a longer lifespan. So it will keep lubricating your chain for much longer than a dry lubricant. Then there's this new wax lubricant we have with its additive. It's extremely slippery solid. So it's low in stiction, low in viscous drag. However, it also has a good lifespan. So you're not forever reapplying it on your chain. So you're going to get the best of both worlds. And as far as friction is concerned, it is also going to save you up to five watts of your power. So the wax lubricant is not only the cleanest lubricant, it's also the lowest in friction. And by keeping up regular waxing of your chain, instead of getting two to 3,000 kilometers usage out of your chain, you're going to get up to 15,000 or more kilometers before reaching the 0.5% wear mark. Now, as far as wear is concerned, the longer your chain lasts, 
the longer your rear cassette and your front chain rings are going to last as well, your whole drive tram. Now, once your chain does reach 0.5% wear, you replace it with a brand new chain. Then when that reaches 0.5% wear, you replace it with a third chain. Yep, you'll get three chains per cassette every time. Now, if each chain lasts 15,000 kilometers or more, how long is that with three chains? 45,000 kilometers or more before you need to replace your rear cassette. Now, how long does it take you to ride 45,000 kilometers? Chances are you're going to be wanting to upgrade your bike before you even need to replace your first cassette at the back. That's how long this wax is going to make your drivetrain last. Now, paraffin wax is a brilliant chain lubricant on its own. However, when you combine it with an additive, it becomes even better. Now, some additives are molybdenum disulfide, silicon, PTFE or Teflon, graphite, hexagonal boron nitride, and tungsten disulfide, and there are others as well. Now, we'll just focus in quickly on molybdenum disulfide because it's commonly used in chain lubricants, and in particular, it's used in molten speed wax. Now, of course, we're comparing this wax to the homemade one. We've been doing that test, and in the previous video, we did a complete clean out of the two chains. And in the petrol, we had some deposits at the bottom of the jar. And with the molten speed wax, we saw that it was magnetic. So some of the material at the bottom was ferrous. And in the homemade one, there was very little ferrous material at all. Now, here's some molybdenum disulfide here. And let's just see if it's magnetic. So I'll put some in the glass and put a magnet, it's a strong magnet. It's definitely not magnetic. So what is in the bottom of that jar is ferrous material attracted to the magnet, not molybdenum disulfide. So it can only be metal, which has come either from the road or from the chain itself. Now, the homemade wax was a lot cleaner, had hardly any ferrous material in it. So chances are, with the molten speed wax chain, it was from the chain wearing out itself on the inside. And as you saw from the previous two testing videos, the molybdenum disulfide may actually be hindering the low friction qualities of the wax. So molybdenum disulfide really isn't required. Not only that, it's also dirty stuff that leaves black smudges everywhere as well. Now it's taken a lot of testing and a lot of time, three and a half years in fact, of trying all different additives for waxes. And here are just some of my personal ones that I've been trying out. So now what we finally found was the ideal additive is PTFE just on its own at a ratio of one in 10. So one part Teflon to 10 parts paraffin wax. And there was no need to have any extra Teflon. So that ratio turned out just right. Now, quite often with Teflon, it cakes together or clumps together in a mixture and you use an anti-caking agent like molybdenum disulfide, which helps keep it apart. Well, it wasn't necessary if the Teflon was kept very small particulates, like 1.6 micron. So there you have it. It's a ratio of 1 in 10 at 1.6 micron. Now, initially, after putting this new lubricant with the PTFE powder on, after a couple of hundred kilometers of riding, I took the chain off and cleaned it and had a look and I noticed that all this white Teflon powder had filled in all the scratches and imperfections on the chain on the outside of the links. Even around the pivots, the pins where they go through, filled in any bit it could. <laughs> it was interesting. So I cleaned the chain completely in petrol and guess what? The Teflon, a lot of it was still there, all these white little bits filling in all the crevices. So that was really interesting. And so I concluded that if that's so on the outside, it surely must be so on the inside. It must be doing the same sort of thing. So it's very, very stubborn. In fact, so much so, the only way, way to get that Teflon out of the crevices was to physically scour it off. The PTFE is a very, very slippery substance, and it improves the anti-sticking of dirt. So when you've got the PTFE on your chain, and dirt finds it really difficult to cling to your chain. So without dirt clinging to your chain, you don't have a grinding paste with the lubricant, so it won't get into your chain and grind away at the lifespan of your chain. So that's why it's going to give your chain such a long lifespan. And it's lovely and smooth still.
A PT thingy is a super lubricant, and so it decreases the friction of just having the paraffin wax on its own. It's also a dry lubricant. So the one in 10 ratio that we have for this is the perfect balance for long life between re-waxing and not having PTFE coming off your chain all over the place and wasting your money. So it's no wonder that this combination of PTFE powder in paraffin wax has been used by the likes of Roberta Ura in the Giro d'Italia, Pierre Roland in the Tour de France, Bradley Wiggins in his hour record, Elio Viviani on the track, and of course there's Ironman, Olympic and Commonwealth events as well. Now, you can buy a chain already treated with this PTFE powder and paraffin wax combination if you want. It's going to cost you a small fortune or you can make it yourself. So let's go and show you how. So the things you need are a small, slow cooker, anywhere between two and three and a half litres. Don't go too big because you'll need too much wax to cover the chain. So a fairly small, slow cooker. Also, don't use a rice cooker because they get too hot too fast. Next, you'll need refined or food grade paraffin wax. It's sort of a white clearish colour, so you'll need that. And then the hardest one to get is PTFE powder or polyfluorotetraethylene. So if you can get that, then you'll need a coat hanger or a piece of wire so that you can make this shape. And that's to hook your chain on and swish it around in the wax when you're ready. So one of them. And of course your perfectly clean chain ready to wax. Refined paraffin wax usually comes in pellets or blocks, but if you really can't get refined paraffin wax, you can use candles, preferably unscented and uncolored. For a handy sized batch, use 500 grams of wax. And if you have to use candles, remove the wicks once they're melted. So put 500 grams of paraffin wax in your cooker Put it on low and let it sit for quite some time to melt completely. Now, if you put it on high, it'll melt quicker, but make sure that you keep an eye on the temperature. Here's a little electronic temperature gauge that I use, but you can use any one. And make sure it doesn't go over around about 90. 93, 90, thereabouts is the ideal temperature. Now the wax is all liquid, it's time to add the PTFE powder. Now usually they come in little 50 or 100 gram sachets, which is really handy because you add your 50 grams. So this is a 50 gram sachet, so we're just going to tip it all in. Give it a bit of a stir so that it looks milky and you're ready to go. Now get your coat hanger or piece of wire and make a swishing tool. It doesn't have to be perfect, but here's an approximate size of what I find handy. Now put your chain on the little hooky tool that you made. Doesn't have to be exact. There we go. Link pieces on as well. And pop them straight in the wax. Swish it around. You can see that PTFE powder was sitting on the bottom and now it's being stirred up. That's fine, it's getting into the chain. So because it's the first wax for this chain, it needs to soak around about 10 to 15 minutes. So it's been that already. Now when taking your chain out, let it drip. And now if you're using it in uh, wet conditions, muddy conditions, or off-road or gravel, then just let it drip until there's hardly any more drips, and then put it somewhere to cool down, just hang it up. And that will leave a little bit of wax on the outside of the chain. Now, if you're using it in dry, fairly dry conditions, like on the road, and you want your chain to be super duper clean and shiny, then as soon as you take it out while it's dripping, give it a wipe with a nice clean cloth. I'm wearing a glove because it's quite hot, the wax. And keep wiping, and that'll take most of the wax off the outside. It'll still leave a bit on the, outs on the outside to protect it, but it'll leave a super duper shiny and clean chain and also it'll stop wax from getting on your cassette and your front chain ring. It'll keep it to a minimum so everything will be super duper clean. Once it's cooled down it'll be all stiff. <laughs> so just work it off the hanger, take the links off first. <laughs> like that. Just take your time. There you go. And it'll be all stiff. So all you need to do now is loosen up the links. Now there's a couple of ways of doing that. You can use a pair of gloves, just use a 
put it over your thumb so it's sort of like that <laughs> and back the other way and do the whole chain or you can go over a knob now I've had to have on my drawers here some knobs sticking out nice wooden knob and it works really well of course then you just do the ends of the chain you just use your fingers that's fine you don't have to wear gloves it just hurts a bit sometimes on your fingers if you've got ultra tough fingers you'll be right so just keep working it get them freed up start them going same with the other end and you're right for your removable links there's a slot on the pin which fills up with wax making it difficult to interlock both sides together to clean out this wax slide the pin into the opening of the opposing link plate and give it a few swivels and of course do the same for the other pin then to reduce excess wax on the inner plate surface lightly hold the pin with a pair of pliers and twist against that plate and then do the same for the other link plate now you can thread the chain onto your drivetrain and join it with the removable link on your first ride after waxing it takes about 15 minutes for the chain to reach its maximum efficiency and it will remain good for about 250 to 300 kilometers and then you re-wax to re-wax your chain the first thing to do is turn your slow cooker on because the wax will take at least half an hour to warm up now while that's warming up go and take your chain off and we can clean your drivetrain I recommend Connex links because they're the easiest to remove with no tool required and they're also the most durable link. Get a sieve like this, this is just a plastic one, and put your chain and your link in there. Boil a kettle of water and pour it slowly over your chain. This will remove any excess wax and dirt from the outside but leave the good wax inside your chain links. Right, now your chain's hot so be careful. Oh. Be careful, yeah, and just let it cool down a bit. Thread it onto your swishing tool and straight into the pot of wax. Even if the wax hasn't melted yet, it will heat up the chain as it does, and that's fine. All you need is some sort of a tray. This is a kitty litter tray, a dustpan brush, which you can get anywhere some spray degreaser and a pump sprayer with water in it put the tray on the ground directly below the cassette in the rear derailleur get your spray degreaser and just put a little bit on your cassette there that's all you need and a little bit on the brush and then spin your wheel backwards toward you and hold the brush on the cogs And then on the jockey wheels, then with your water sprayer, wheel forward and just spray from about halfway on your cassette and downwards. Don't spray up above here, it might end up in your mechanism and your cassette body. So just halfway and go slowly, spin the wheel a little bit at a time. And the jockey wheels, give them a bit of a spray. And then on the inside as well. And if your first gear, your front cog here, the big one, if that's dirty on the inside, give that a bit of a spray as well. Let that drip down. Now move the tray to directly under your crank set. So get your brush. Put a bit more degreaser on and then put your brush on the big chain ring and then on your small chain ring as well and that's all you usually need now if you're for instance riding in the wet and you've got more wax on your chain or on your mountain bike and you've got more wax on your chain 
quite often you'll get more wax on your chainring than your rear cogs. So what you can do for your front chainring, just put a very small amount of spray on the rings. Now just avoid your bottom bracket, so spray down the bottom area. Just a little bit and on the inside as well. That's all you need. And again do the same thing with the brush. And rinse it off with water. Again, spray down the bottom, don't spray up the top, down the bottom area. The inside of course. Your front railer will usually be fairly clean, but if you want to give that a bit of a scrub as well, if it's got some wax, again, you really only need a very, very small amount of degreaser on there. You just give it a rub on the cage. And there. Very quickly, and then spray it off immediately. Now that will go down over your frame area, over your bottom bracket area, but if you do it quick enough and use enough water, then the degreaser won't affect anything. You'll be fine. You're using very little mostly water here. All done. All done, all lovely and clean and in our drip tray here you've got about a quarter of a cup of water with a little bit of degreaser and wax and dirt on there. That's all you've got. So the minimalist amount of chemicals now and a can of degreaser like that, a can of spray degreaser will last you between 9 and 12 months. If on your first ride after waxing you get little bits of wax on your drivetrain area don't rub it with a rag just use a dry brush and it flicks off easily. Apart from the initial cleaning of your chain, all the rest of the time, every re-wax for your chain and your drivetrain is going to use hardly any chemicals at all. So environmentally friendly, it's certainly the way to go as well. How much have you been paying for your lubricant and how long does it last? Well, the paraffin wax, 500 grams, is going to cost you anywhere between five and ten dollars and then the PTFE powder 50 grams is going to cost you about ten dollars so it's anywhere between 15 and 20 dollars for one batch now each batch you make is going to last you about 15,000 kilometers how cheap is that then you can factor in that you're going to save money by not buying a set or a front chain ring for a very long time so if you've never tried waxing your bike chain or you've had trouble in the past I hope this video will set you on your way. I've been doing that for about two and a half years now. It's definitely the way to go. It's really a fair, clean, easy. <laughs> it's a no-brainer for me, like, now that it costs, yeah. Yes, I'm using wax. Here's another wax, eh? Wax. Got my drugs. They came in the other day in a little, little bag. Drugs. Yeah, you know that little white powder bag? Oh! <laughs> it's like a bag of cocaine. Bag of cocaine? Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. There's another wax chain. When did you, when did you wax it? Last night? Uh, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday. So it's only done about... Freshly waxed. 40, 40, 50k. Look at that. Look at that. Nothing. Not much on it. <laughs>